Hey guys, this is John. Welcome to another episode of Climbing the Tactics Training Ladder. I solved a few tactics earlier today. My rating was at 2591 initially, but upon going to upload that video, it was about a 20 minute solving session, I realized that there was no video. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> so that happens every once in a while if you're a YouTuber. No harm, no foul, but my rating did increase a little bit. I did get a couple of the problems wrong, and I wanted to draw your attention to one problem. If you're looking for a challenge, this problem here, white to move, black has just played king takes a4, so white to play. Uh, I failed to solve this problem after thinking for about nine and a half minutes. So if you want a challenge, you can solve this. But let's press ahead with the current session. I'm going to keep this relatively short, but let's see how we do. Okay, so black's up a rook. Very precarious king situation. First thought is rook over here. Uh, the H rook, that is. Probably B3 check will be the answer. I think we can maybe just march the king right in, though. King A3, and then come up to B2. I don't see any major issue with that. I don't also really see any other moves than rook over to C8. That's just seemingly the only good move here. Attacking the queen. we got to dispute this C-file situation. I'm happy to trade two rooks for the queen here because black will have queen against rook and get rid of this queen. So, I mean, b 4 is maybe the only other move I'd consider. But I don't like the look of that. White has too many checking and potentially mating options. So let's go with this one. Yeah, and now here I was thinking king a3. Just double checking because, yeah, king here, there's queen takes maybe. So yeah, king a3, and I'm going to run in. I'm going to run all the way into b2. All right, and problem solved. Yeah, black can be this bold because, for one thing, white's running out of checks, useful checks to give, and white has this weak back rank. So if ever there's a swap here, black will be threatening checkmate on c1. Okay, let's press forward. So black's in check where to put the king. I mean, king h8 escapes future checks. And then if black gets a chance, we're going to go rook e2 most likely. And then mate white. So king h8 is the move that comes to mind because, yeah, it's harder for white to follow up with checks. I mean, there is bishop takes d4. But pawn takes d4. We're still threatening rook e2. Uh, black's also threatening queen takes g3. I think that's important to note. If we go to h7, there might be some bishop takes g6 problem, so I think we can rule that out. King f8, you don't want to step in the file. Um, but what about king g7? King Is king g7 just as good as king h8? I'm trying to figure out if there's a difference between those two moves. Hmm. Because either way, the only decent check that white has is bishop takes d4 as a follow-up. So just trying to put my finger on what would be the difference. If I were white, how I would try to escape that situation or defend. I don't think bishop back to g2 is that compelling of an option. That feels like it should get mated at some point. There's got to be some sort of difference, though. What if white just gives up some material? So let's say king h8, bishop takes e8. Nah, because then I think black should mate without even having to resort to rook e2. Queen g3, queen h4. So that holds true of king g7 as well. So what gives here? I feel like I'm being tricked. <laughs> Uh, queen takes c5, also too slow for the same reason. Some sort of bishop e6 is not going to work. Bishop g2 I don't think is going to work. Hmm. What about rook g1 after king h8 or king g7? Rook g1. That should also fail. Rook e2 check. Everything's working out for black. 
I mean, King H8 was my first instinct, but if I see no problem with King G7, I'd probably slightly prefer King G7. It stays attacking the bishop, maybe in some lines could be helpful. It does leave the king a little more exposed, potentially, but it's hard for white to solve this issue of the bishop being in the way of the queen coming to f7, or the rook coming to f7. I don't see how that's ever going to be relevant. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm just going to go with king g7. King g7 was incorrect. Hmm. I think we should look at that right away before I forget. Okay, so king h8 is correct, huh? Because of rook g1? Okay, so I thought just rook e2 here. Rook g2, take. Yeah, this all makes sense. And then pick up the bishop. So... What's the refutation then? Because that all holds true of king g7 as well, right? Hmm. Maybe I can click into the analysis board. Hopefully this shows for you guys. Yeah, engine says king h8 is the only move. So if king g7, on the other hand, king g7, bishop takes d4, pawn takes d4, Queen c7, wow, okay. Should have gone with my instincts. Yeah, queen c7, so precise sequence. Apparently that's the only move, and that guards the g3 pawn from a distance. So I'm guessing here that's going to be king g1. Yeah, and black has no mating follow-up. There is this. Uh, the engine says white should win after queen d6. There is this move as well, whereupon it's dead equal, according to Stockfish. Wow, okay, so yeah. I guess I should have trusted my instinct on that one. But let's proceed. Hindsight's 2020, 20, right? That's that's pretty tough to discern the difference between those two. All right, so white trying to push this pawn. So e6, this pawn's going this way. I wouldn't think that there's really any other move to consider. White seems to have a draw. Oh, there's bishop f6, but that should be a draw. Take, take, knight f4. So e6, how is black even going to try to stop this pawn? Well, it's obvious I'm going to play it. So bishop f6, and now I think taking is going to be the move. Yeah, okay, so black's going to play e7, knight d5. Gotcha. So e7, knight d5. Could promote to a knight, but that's, that's a draw because they'll take on f6. Um... Could throw in a check here, but does a check help? Check and try to force the king to a light square? That could be it. That could be it. Ah, is it going to be some weird promotion to a knight or something after a check? So if we check on c3, black would have to play king a6. e7, knight d5. Wow, that's a nice position. Yeah, it's promote to a knight. Ah, uh, no, but then knight takes on c3. So does that mean I check from d8? No, but then the, knight, the bishop's going to get in the way. Bishop c3 check, king a6, e7, knight d5. Ah, oh, that would have been so nice if, it, if we could promote to a knight without the bishop hanging. But not working. Hmm. So how do we get around this? Bishop d8 first, but bishop d8, king a6. Ah, and then we just control the c7 square. Okay, that's a more uh, banal solution, but effective. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, stalemate, knight c7, bishop takes. Oh, wow, I had to promote to a rook. <laughs> Somehow I got that wrong, but I still gained points. What's up with that? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Knight c7. Yeah, bishop takes his stalemate. Otherwise, the queen hangs. Yeah, you got to promote to a rook because the rook doesn't control b5. That is tricky. 
again let's um let's take a quick look at that yeah so i went through the first part kind of fast because i mean again i didn't see any any alternative to e6 i assumed white's trying to win this problem so now it dawned on me okay if e7 knight d5 and uh, black's threatening the bishop and also threatening the pawn and threatening a fork monster knight on d5 so this is correct yeah you know i was thinking this would be nice to try to force the king on a light square so something like this black doesn't have time for the fork because we're coming with check but then king a6 knight d5 uh e7 knight d5 and e8 equals knight would be so nice if this knight had to move away and then we could uh, it's not even checkmate because there's b6 available well this this would be that would not even be checkmate because it's check <laughs> all right I, I definitely was not assessing that properly but i found bishop d8 but yeah that's that's clever you got to get a rook at the end of the line a rook is necessary as you can see the only piece that's going to win there but since i got the queen that failed the problem because of this with stalemate got to be on uh, on your game here okay let's continue not doing so well today but these problems are getting harder okay so black's starting to promote we have black almost in a mating net of some some kind here uh, knight f5 check is obvious. Knight f5, king g6. Don't see a great follow up though. Um, seeing if king g4 immediately for some reason would help. I don't think white has. A whole lot of time here black threatening to promote and then threatening checks after that we could go knight f5 king g6 knight e7 hmm let's say king f7 knight d5 king e8 Black still threatening to promote, and Black is guarding the c1 square, I should point out, too. So rook c1 trying to stop the pawn is always going to run into bishop takes c1, unless we can disrupt that. So still scanning for ideas here. Yeah, and the rook is hanging as well. That's definitely worth pointing out too. Seems like knight f5 is really the only decent move to start. Unless it's some sort of stalemate draw, but even that is hard to engineer. So knight f5, king g6, and what's the follow-up? Could play king g4, and then if bishop takes c7, there is knight h4, knight takes g2. That's a draw. But knight f5, king g6, king g4, g1, queen is another matter. Yeah, rook c6, king f7, black's getting away. So knight f5, king g6, knight e7 again. Knight e7, king f7. Yeah, knight d5, there's bishop takes c7, actually. So that's not working. Hmm. Tough one here. Very difficult. Is 98 or 96 at all possible? I mean, neither move really has a threat, is the problem, I think. There's not really any good follow ups there.
So yeah, I'd say knight f5 check, king g6 is the best position I have so far, but that's not very far into the line. I'm looking at knight moves there. Try to set up some sort of fork. Like rook g7, king takes f5, rook takes g3, but bishop takes nothing. Ah, is it though? Ooh. Bishop takes king h3 and the king is on f5. If black promotes that stalemate, if he gets a rook, also stalemate, promotes to a queen in the first instance. Promote to a knight, you can take the bishop. Yeah, that might be it. I think it is a stalemate problem. So knight f5, king g6, rook g7, king takes f5, rook takes g3. Black doesn't really have any option other than taking, and then the key is you don't take. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, it definitely seems like white has to go for the draw. Okay. Only two points for all that effort. <laughs> all right, I'll take it. Again, getting into some tough problems here. All right, so black is down a little bit of material, but on the attack, uh, queen h1, I think, is the first thing you look at here. Queen trade, king g2. But then the checks don't lead to a win of material. Um... My mind goes towards f5 as well. f5 seems like a very handy move in this situation. Maybe try to get black to, or uh, get white to take, which could give you some e4 options later. Uh, queen takes g4 certainly bears consideration. Queen g4, rook check and check again, but that kind of just transposes to the other line. Shouldn't be shouldn't be working. Uh, F5, on the other hand, I really just like the look of that. I'm trying to connect it to something concrete, though, if I can. Because that's just an idea. Uh, F5, E takes F5, Queen takes F5, let's say. King E1. Yeah, even there. Ah, I guess there's Queen takes G4 then. Queen takes G4, Queen takes G4, Rook H1 thanks to that bishop controlling the d2 escape route. Yeah, f5 looks really nice. And if they don't take it, I think queen h1 should win. Or something similar. Yeah, rook g3 is just a kind of pathetic move to have to play. I should lose. I think f5. Okay, rook g3, well, white plays the pathetic move. <laughs> uh, am I going to go f4? or check or take so many options so many options and i can only choose one that's chess in a nutshell right there i mean f4 is pretty forcing still i do like the look of f4 I don't think it's queen h1. Queen h1 seems premature. Could just take on e4. <laughs> f4 is the move I want to play. That feels like it might be the solution, but I think take on e4 is also pretty good. F4, rook F3. How do I crack that position? A rook G8, probably. Yeah, rook G8 should win. What about F4, rook G4? That's probably the only other move. I think taking on E3 should lose. So F4, rook G4. What then? There's some checks after queen h1, but we're not winning the rook. Uh, there's f3. Uh, f3, queen takes f3, rook f8. Queen takes f3, rook f8. 
queen takes f8, queen h1. I think that's the solution. Yeah, I'm going to go with f4. Okay, and that's correct. Yeah, so based on those lines I was elaborating on, rook g4, problem could have continued. f3, queen takes f3, rook f8. Queen takes f8, rook, queen h1, rook g1, queen takes g1, mate. Okay. Do a couple more here. Lots of stuff hanging here. Rook takes c2. There's also bishop takes e7. This rook is defended on c8. Also, maybe we can get at white's king with some sort of move like queen h1. Bishop takes e7, rook takes c8. Bishop takes c8, queen takes e7. Then we can pick up the... No, we can't pick up the bishop. Never mind. I was listening. I thought there was a queen a2 check. But not so. This position is making my head spin a little bit. Um, rook takes c2. And if bishop takes c2... Queen takes c2. There's queen a8 check. That looks like it could be a problem. Huh. What about the move rook a8 to start? Rook a8 to start threatening queen takes c2. So bishop takes f6, queen takes c2. It feels very loose though. Hmm. Again, there's this bishop takes e7 move to begin with, but I also don't trust that one so much. Bishop takes e7, rook takes c8. Bishop takes c8, queen takes e7. I don't see what white would have to fear there. Not any good checks here. Hmm. Maybe it could be rook a8. Maybe that isn't too slow. I should look at rook takes c2 a little bit more. It might be something with that. Rook takes c2, bishop takes c2. Because I was saying if bishop takes e7 at that point, I didn't like queen a8 check. Yeah, which wins the queen. Rook takes c2, bishop takes c2. So just queen takes c2, but then again, queen a8. Queen a8 is... Just the issue here. And I can't go king g7 because the queen f8 mate. And if I block, blacks or white's just going to pick up the bishop on f6. So what gives? Yeah, I really don't think it's queen h1. That feels too slow. Don't like the tension here. If black has to play bishop takes c8, I feel that should be a failure for black. Yeah, I'm going to go with rook a8. Incorrect. Hmm, minus 7. I'm taking a beating on these problems. I'm trying to solve them faster, so... You know, throughout this series, I've professed the the preference and really been hammering you guys to solve for accuracy. But once you get up into the higher rating levels, um, solving for speed is becoming increasingly important, especially with the rating is concerned. And, you know, you shouldn't worry about the rating if you're below like 2000, even below 2200, I would say. But um, that's why I am solving these positions a little bit faster. I'm not going to get anywhere with the rating if I'm not. And it's good for my over-the-board chess, too, to make quicker, decisive decisions in certain spots. 
Uh, okay, so the answer is rook takes c2, bishop takes c2, queen h1. Wow. And that's completely winning for black, apparently. Let's explore that line. So rook takes c2, bishop takes c2. Yeah, and I was saying I didn't like the options, the obvious options that black has here, like queen takes c2 because of uh, queen a8 check. And then black will have to block and white will take on f6 eventually. White should just be better there. Or if bishop takes e7, which looks at, looks nice at first, bishop takes b1, bishop takes a3, that runs into queen a8 check and white wins. So white's going to pick up the queen next move. But apparently queen h1 is winning. Wow. Ah, uh, because threat of take here and mate. Hmm. And the a8 square is covered. That is tough. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that. I mean, you can see the queen h1 idea cross my mind, but... Not with taking on c2 first, because it looks like black's so exposed on the back rank. But yeah, the control of the a8 square is key. Otherwise, white would play queen a8 and be winning. Checkmate on f8 coming up, but yoink. Oof, nice one. Okay, let's do uh, let's do one more problem. Okay, bishop b5 is the move that's screaming out here. Because it sets up rook d8 and also threatens black's queen. Um, also, you know, queen takes c5 is a variation on that. I wonder if bishop b5 is too obvious, though. <laughs> it kind of seems uh, on bishop b5, maybe black has to move like castles. Probably black has to castle or something similar to evade mate. And also stop bishop takes c6 with check. So I'm also looking at other bishop moves. Bishop e4, for instance. Yeah, like maybe bishop e4, and if black castles short, queen h4. Save the queen and threaten checkmate on h7 and keep the threat on the queen on, on uh, c6. Bishop takes h7 also comes to mind. But I think on bishop takes h7, black can just play something like bishop d7. Material-wise, white is down two pawns here. So not down a piece or anything, but two pawns. I'm liking bishop e4. I don't see... Uh, Strong objection to bishop e4 in view of castles queen h4. Yeah, bishop takes h7, bishop d7, I think is not crushing. So I'm going to go with bishop e4. All right. And I got seven points for that one. All right, so I actually gained a few points despite getting a few problems wrong. Yeah, got that one wrong. I think you guys can see on that mini board. That one I got wrong. That one I should have got right. I got very inattentive at the end. That was me not doing my due diligence. Uh, this was a nice one, the stalemate problem. Yeah, this with f5. This was a tough one. And yeah, bishop e4, I think comparatively much easier, personally, of those two problems. Okay, so not a very long session. I will consider how I want to make, how I want to do this series going forward because yeah the problems are getting really difficult and to continue gaining rating and go anywhere with the rating I got to be solving faster taking more risks uh, it's sort of like puzzle rush in a sense even though this is a different animal but just to reiterate I think for most of you guys solving for accuracy first is going to be important once you can comfortably solve standard tactical positions uh, with good accuracy then you can work on the speed. But if you have any ideas for the series, let me know. I might just continue and try to see how high I can get. But uh, certainly my accuracy percentage is probably going to be taking a hit. Otherwise, you guys are going to be sitting here and watching me think for 10 minutes at a time on a problem. So thank you for watching, guys. And I'll be back again with some more videos this week.